this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Modern Day Shanghai. I'm your host, Sam Mercaglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a second, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So, friend of the channel, Madeline Walchko, and the crew on board the motor vessel, President Wilson have dropped their third episode on the Restricted to Ship series. Uh, this episode is entitled... 50 Shades of Grey Water, and it has a lot to do with the fact that they're pumping off sludge and, and waste off the ship. And uh, it's funny, and we're going to take a look at some of the scenes from the episode. But before I go into it, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it means to be a merchant mariner. Now, the title of today's episode, Modern Day Shanghai, obviously has a kind of dual meaning here. And let me explain. So here's the location of the President Wilson, located in modern day Shanghai. She's on this island shipyard off the uh, coast right here, part of a whole series of vessels that are in birth. That's not actually the President Wilson there. This is a Google map earth, but there you have it. So they're actually stuck in the port of Shanghai. However, the term Shanghai actually has a meaning. It uh, refers to basically the abduction and the uh, uh, ability to get crew members to go on a vessel basically against their will. There used to be a practice in the merchant marine known as crimping, where basically people would be hired to go out and get crews to work on ships, even though those crews may not have been wanting to do that. And crimps would do this by getting basically mariners in trouble so that they owed money and the only way to get out of it was by working on the ship they would in the most extreme cases beat them on the head and and basically take them and drag them onto a ship so that when they wake up they're on a vessel that is the most extreme form as uh portrayed in the charlie chaplin movie that i have on the title page here entitled shanghai and actually have a link to that movie in the show notes but understand the right of mariners has been a very tenacious issue throughout history. And it's really not until the early 20th century that the right of mariners were codified in two documents. One was the 1915 Seamen's Act, known as the La Follette Seamen's Act for Robert La Follette, a progressive senator from Wisconsin. But more importantly, in the Merchant Marine Act of 1920, known as the Jones Act. But I just want to read you of the rulings of a case from the late 1890s. The, the case was known as Robertson versus Baldwin. The Supreme Court held that merchant mar uh, seamen under contract could be legally compelled to work notwithstanding the 13th Amendment's prohibition on slavery and involuntary servitude. Remember, under the 13th Amendment, you couldn't have slavery, you couldn't have involuntary servitude. However, the Supreme Court did rule that you could have voluntary servitude. According to the court, seamen were, quote, deficient in that full and intelligent responsibility for their acts, which is accredited to ordinary adults. In other words, uh, along with children and wards, they could be deprived of their liberty. And one of the things that we saw was a series of cases where mariners signed on shipping articles. These are the agreements that mariners sign onto, and therefore they basically sign themselves over to servitude of a vessel until the provisions of that agreement are met. Usually it means the vessel returns back to the United States, at which point the contract, the orders are basically nullified. Now, the career of a merchant mariner may sound glamorous. And one of my favorite little things I found on the internet was this, you know, what are merchant mariners viewed as? And these little six cell things are always great. You know, there's what my buddies think I do, sail ships out in the middle of the ocean and just, you know, always staring storms in the eyes. There's what my girlfriend or boyfriend, we gotta be proactive here and, 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 open-minded here today because there are many women and men serving in merchant uh, marines. Uh, what my girlfriend thinks I do, party all the time. That's, that's a, a usual thing. There's what my parents think I do, that we're in this kind of you know, formal military organization. That's not what the merchant marine is, it's a civilian. 
entity. It's, it's not even a thing, the U.S. Merchant Marine, I would argue. It, it, there's not a organization, the U.S. Merchant Marine. There are merchant mariners who are licensed by the Coast Guard. There's commercial firms, there's government use of commercial mariners, but there's not really the head of the U.S. Merchant Marine. It doesn't exist. What societies think I do? Yeah, the, the drunken sailor, that may be a little more accurate than we tend to do. What I think I do, which is always, you know, doing the cutting edge stuff and being there up on the bridge and navigating from point A to point B, or working down in the engine room. And then there's what I really do, which is an over glorified, in some cases, repairman. That's probably one of the best depictions of what the merchant mariners are. And I love this depiction. I really do. And there's one for engineers. There's, there's a whole variety of these. But the restricted to ship series being done by Madeline Walchko and the crew on the President Wilson really is one of the best ones, I think, that capture what it's like to be a merchant mariner today, that the ship is stuck in the shipyard and they're waiting again for workers to return. Now, Shanghai has been in a lockdown since March. The workers on board President Wilson, the ship was in port for about a month long shipyard period, it's supposed to be 30 days. One day, the shipyard workers went off at lunch and never returned. And since then, the ship has been stuck. Their engines taken apart. They can't leave. They've got scaffolding. They've got work everywhere. Things are apart. They are having a hard time just surviving, running low on food, water. There's no air conditioning for a lot of time on the ship. And so the this, this ship really finds itself in a desperate situation. And unfortunately, until they get the workers back on board to complete the repairs, they are stuck there in that shipyard. And that's what has been transpiring over the past two episodes. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Ernesto Lagromada from Philippines. I live in Seattle, Washington. My code name is the king of vitamin B. I've been here for like eight months and my total contract is four months. And until now, we are still here. I'm sure really, really wants to go home because I need to attend the wedding party of my grandma, my grandpa. So please send me back home very soon. I am really, really miss my family, like my cow, my goat, my chicken, my dog. They are so really, really hungry, okay? So bye bye. Uh, Filipinos make up the bulk of the world's shippers, uh, mariners out there. And many Filipinos who come to the United States become US citizens, sail on American ships. A very commonplace to see Filipinos on the ship. I love that guy's story. I, I think uh, when he talks about the wedding party of his grandma and his grandpa, I, I don't think they're getting married. I, th I think it's the anniversary is what he talks about. But I love how he talks about missing everyone from his family to his goat and, and his chickens. Uh, but the big part of that story you should catch is he signed on for four months. He signed on for 120 days. And he's now 240 days into that contract. And this is something we've been seeing with mariners around the world throughout COVID, actually. This is not unusual. And matter of fact, there was just a story in G-Captain about the Maritime Labor Convention renewing its amendments, renewing the, uh, the, the agreement that was signed back in 2006 that basically sets standards for mariners around the world. The MLC deals with mariners under the International Maritime Organization signed by nearly every country in the world except for the United States. Yeah, the United States has not signed the MLC, and there's a lot of reasons behind that. But still, uh, the U.S. argues that they have better coverage than what the MLC does, which is true. That, that is true. However, it does kind of look bad that they haven't signed that. Anyway, let's take a look at some other views of the crew members on board, President Wilson, and how they're feeling about being stuck now in Shanghai for such a long period of time. My name is John Clark. I'm an AB on this vessel. I've uh, been on this ship since January 10th, so a little over 100 days at this point. Um, I believe my contracts are three to four months on this ship. Uh, concerning my time here and what's been going on for a follow-up, it's disappointing. These ships, the container ships, were supposed to be the, the fun stuff. You know, the more interesting part of sailing versus where I've been in the military side of ships. It's, it's disheartening. Like, I'm almost broken out here. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna do my job. It's been disappointing 
being out here with the situation that we've been going through with the food, the information, the lack of information from all sides, contract companies, the organizations that sent me out here personally for my department. Uh, I'm just very disappointed with the way things are going. Um, we have been, we have received some fruits and vegetables uh, from the local government here and according to all sides of the ship, the contract company and the organization that sent me here, that's an acceptable form of uh, the way to treat us. In my book, uh, it's not. It's not. This was not what I signed up for. This experience has been an absolute, I want to say nightmare. It's disappointing. Out here, we have nothing. We have four foot long cucumbers delivered by the local government that taste disgusting no matter how you cook them. The disappointment for me personally out here is I try hard, I work hard, so it's tough seeing other people not pull their weight. You know, it's disappointing for everybody. The, the information we're getting from the contract company, the foreign owners, and the American side of the owners of the contract company, no one knows. You know, the, the local government here doesn't know. Just looking forward to anything happening and us getting out of here. So John Clark is an AB, able-bodied seaman. So rank structure in the Merch Marine has officers on the deck and engine side. So on the deck side, you have the master, the first mate, second mate, third mate. On the engine side, chief engineer, first assistant, second assistant, third assistant. Then below them, you have the unlicensed crew members. On the deck side, bosun, AB, able-bodied seaman, ordinary seaman. On the engine side, unlicensed engineer, uh, oilers and wipers. And John there sounds like he came from military sealift command from the military side he talks about. Now he's working on the contract side. This ship is operated by APL, which is a, a U.S. company, but it's a subsidiary of CMA CGM, which is a French Italian uh, French company. It's French, excuse me, French company. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of issues about the doubt about when things are going to open up in Shanghai and it creates a lot of angst. And, you know, it's one thing to be living on a ship and working on a ship and operating it. It's another thing to be at the mercy of a shipyard and shipyard periods are never fun. I've been through two of them, but I got to say mine were a heck of a lot better than theirs. Shipyards are never in the best spot. They're always far away from everything, but here they're stuck on the ship. They can't even get off the vessel. And the way the Chinese government is treating them is pretty bad, pretty abysmal. Now, normally a ship like this would be in a U.S. shipyard. But the problem is there's not enough U.S. shipyards. We haven't invested in our infrastructure. There's not enough U.S. shipyards. And what shipyards we do have are basically catering to Navy and government contracted ships. So ships like President Wilson for a uh, commercial company have to go find yards overseas. And that's why they're in the shipyard in China. So this last thing I want to show you is from Chinese sanitation crews coming on board the vessel and the crew on board, President Wilson, finally, finally getting inclinations that things may be slowly changing in Shanghai. Let's see. This is Madeline Walchko. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Big day. Big things are happening. Okay, thanks. Bye. Shipyard leadership meeting today at 1530. Thank you. 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 It's a real beyond possibility. Hello guys. This could be the chance. We're, we, are not. We're, we got positive hopes here. We got positive hopes and dreams. How are you, Ernesto? Good, How are you? I am doing good. <laughs> just received an email from the shipyard. It says, good day. Please noted that our good vessel will plan to resume working from tomorrow. 
According to request, please ask your port to arrange PCR test from today. The PCR test shall be done on the 1st, 2nd, 4th, 7th, 10th, 14th, 17th, and 21st days. Your fully cooperation and support will be highly appreciated. Thanks and best regard. What we could identify until now, slowly, mm. slowly. We don't expect to finish tomorrow everything, okay? We just had a meeting with the shipyard leadership. They say they're coming back tomorrow. Not full force, they say maximum 20 to 30 people, maximum. But we'll fucking see what happens. So those are just some clips from Restricted the Ship. I really recommend you go watch the whole episode. If you haven't seen the series yet, go watch the whole series. I've got the link to them on my uh, show notes down below. Go over to Madeline's YouTube page. You can follow her on Instagram. You can follow her across social media. She's great. Uh, but talk to her specifically this week, actually on Monday. I talked to her and uh, they do have shipyard workers on board, not inside the ship, but working the exterior of the ship but only about 100 of the 500 they need on board. So we're starting to see opening up of Shanghai, things starting to change a bit for the crew of the president. Wilson, however, it's going to take a while. Even if they get full shipyard workers back on board, it's weeks until they can get that ship up and running. And unfortunately, the three-episode run of Restricted to Ship may be a little bit longer than they want. So that was today's episode, episode Modern Day Shanghai. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and you can head over to our Patreon page and support the page so that we can bring videos like this to you. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.